get to the good before we get to the bad overall. The guards were shooting very well early on. This is something that I noted as I was just running through the non-conference slate. Katie Johnson, Wendell Green, both playing very aggressive for the Tigers early, and they were shooting uh, pretty efficiently. Both of them were. And Wendell Green, obviously, we're going to get to him in a minute. We're going we're gonna to grade everybody uh, on the team that contributed. I was impressed with what he was doing early. Uh, everybody wanted to compare him to Jared Harper. Harper's my favorite player to ever play the game of basketball. Um, and and I was sitting there thinking, is, is this kid about to have a better career than Jared Harper did at Auburn? Uh, he's got that killer instinct. He can shoot it from anywhere. He can get to the hole. He can lob it. He can dish it. He can do just about everything you want your point guard to do. Uh, and, and he and Katie Johnson playing very aggressive, playing very well early on in the season. People weren't applying a lot of pressure to Auburn. Uh, and I think that's one of the reasons why they falter down the stretch. If you apply a high ball pressure, if you hedge Auburn, uh, their guards are going to struggle for a couple of reasons. Number one, these guys specifically um, really struggled to shoot the ball down the stretch. And so you could easily kind of shut down a uh, half-court offense that way. But also, uh, Window Green really, really struggled considering he was a little undersized to get past those traps and to, to be able to maybe drive it a little bit, um, which is something he can work on this season. I'm really looking forward to seeing him come back. The pick and roll, like I mentioned earlier, uh, was was Auburn's bread and butter for the majority of the season. Uh, and then teams caught on to what Auburn was doing, and they started clogging lanes and shutting that down and, and rejecting lobs. And uh, it was still really fun to watch Auburn's pick and roll work. And they did have moments as the season went on. They still were able to get it to work every now and then, just not as frequently as the beginning of the season. So the pick and roll, the guard shooting well, those were good. Walker Kessler picking up two triple doubles. Uh, like I mentioned early, earlier, very, very, very impressed with Walker Kessler's development from year one at North Carolina to year two here with the Tigers. Um, it, there, there are rumblings uh, that that are uh, being thrown out there. There are rumors being thrown out there that he may potentially make a return to the Tigers this next season. Do I believe those rumors? I don't. No, I don't I don't think so. I would like to think that if he's currently being mocked as a first round pick, like a late first round pick, high second round pick, I would I would probably leave. I think Pearl would probably advise him to leave. But overall, I I I, I would like to see him come back. Um, I don't know if he's going to. Walker Kessler picking up a triple double twice, though. It was awesome. Jabari's game, uh, one of the best, one of the best uh Seasons by an Auburn freshman uh, in a very, very long time. I was, uh, I was very impressed with what Jabari was able to do uh, with, the, with the shots he was able to create um, and just his, his aggressiveness, his three-point shooting. His defense was really solid. Um, he, he brought a lot of energy to the game. And I, I love what Jabari did this season for the Tigers. It's a shame that his, uh, his final game, potentially in an Auburn uniform, uh, was that poor shooting performance against the Miami Hurricanes. Uh, it, it sucks, again, like I mentioned earlier, it sucks the way that the season ended. But again, think about the whole. Think about Jabari's entire season. He had a great year. He had a really good year. It was the reason he was freshman of the year. Uh, and as the season went on, Bruce was telling him to be more aggressive, to take that shot. We got to see him in games late against Vanderbilt, uh, on the road against Florida. We got to see Jabari Smith kind of take over in those games and really, really show his NBA ability. Uh, he uh, just a phenomenal jump shooter, just a beautiful form. Uh, I really hope that he's able to do great things in the NBA uh, if he does elect to declare for the NBA draft, and I would imagine he would. So those are some of the good things, and then one more good thing here. I got, I got an image uh, to pull up. Oh, man. The fan support was another great thing. Uh, for the Tigers this season. Oh, no, did I delete it? Uh, nope, there it is. Yeah, uh, the fan support was just absolutely phenomenal this season. Just all the different memes on uh, on Twitter, and I actually made one yesterday. Uh, you just lost to Lindsey Crosby's Cruton Finger in the Braves World Series trophy. Uh, I saw Lindsey tweet that out last night. He's a writer here at Auburn Daily. Had him on the show yesterday to talk about Auburn baseball's game against, uh, against Jack State. But... Uh, I had to make a meme. I saw Cruton Finger. I saw just a perfect image that was begging to be deep fried. We got to see some phenomenal memes by some really, really talented and creative people uh, throughout the basketball season. We've got we we got to see that like all the way back in 2019. There were some memes, right? There were some early memes, but 
this season, uh, we really got to see the social media community for the for the Tigers take off. I would say that about 80% of it was was healthy and entertaining. 10% of it was um, was just a little strange and maybe a little uncalled for, maybe a little inappropriate. And 10% of it was um, just uh, hateful. Uh, but the majority of the fan base, I would say 80%, the overwhelming majority of the fan base, knew everything, the memes and joking and, and posting things online. It was It was all in good fun, just supporting your team and being passionate about it. The creation of the Peacock, obviously. Um, Auburn, Auburn apparently invented, invented everything, which is something I didn't know until I made a Twitter account. Uh, just, uh, just phenomenal. The fan support, both online and then in person. The games against Alabama and Kentucky were some of the loudest games I've ever been to in my entire life. They, they were just phenomenal atmospheres. I'm getting chills just thinking about that Alabama game where we scored a hundred. Oh man, that was a, that was just so great. The fan support, absolutely fantastic this season. All right, the bad. We had the good. Let's get to the bad. Obviously, like I mentioned, the guard played down the stretch. Guys weren't shooting well. Guys were turning the ball over a little bit. Wasn't the best uh, performance uh, from Wendell Green or Katie Johnson over the final few games of the season. Uh, Zepp Jasper wouldn't necessarily say that he played poorly. We're going to talk about him. We're going to grade him and just give, I'm going to give my thoughts. He's the first player that we're going to get to today. Um, I, I want to see more out of him next season. And I don't think that he was necessary. He was not a bad. Uh, he was not a bad presence on this team this year. The bad guard play down the stretch was a bad thing. The disappearance of the pick and roll it faded. I mean, it was still there, but sparingly uh, down down the stretch. And um, I, it's not necessarily one of those where it's just like, oh well, if Auburn had run the pick and roll more, then they would have won one won more games, won the national title, and Bruce Pearl would just be the best coach on the planet. No, that's not what I'm saying. Uh, what what I'm saying is that the it's it's a shame that teams caught on to what Auburn was doing and they were able to guard it so well, but it was a obviously Auburn's most efficient and consistent play, or at least one of them. And B, it was really entertaining to watch. I mean, just to see three or four times a game, uh, a five foot 11 guy, throw it up to a seven footer, uh, him catching and dunking. I mean, it's just to see that three or four times a game. We're talking about a program that was barely, barely, uh, even capable of, of getting on the gym gym floor uh, back in like 2014, 2015. I mean, you would see games where Auburn would be down by 40 points against Vanderbilt. I mean, it was embarrassing. Some of the things that happened just a few short years ago and think about the way that this, this program has evolved into what it is now. Is it a blue blood? Uh, some people may not like me for saying this. No, uh, but it, it definitely is one of the best. It's one of the, the stronger powers in college basketball right now. But it's so fun to see the players that Coach Pearl has recruited to come play here. It's very fun to watch them do impressive and athletic things like consistent pick and rolls and lobs. I mean, you got to see Devin Cambridge, who unfortunately is in the transfer portal. Got to see him do some incredible things during his time at Auburn. Just some crazy athletic plays. It's just so fun to watch. But the pick and roll was definitely one of the more entertaining parts of the season. It's, uh, it's a shame that it faded. Shot selection. Uh, this was something that was consistent throughout the entire year. Shot selection for the team was poor. I, I, I believe it, to, it, it was poor. And you may say, well, guys like Wendell Green fogging up 30-foot three-pointers or, or pulling up from half court or Katie Johnson consistently going to the hole on fast breaks and looking to draw contact and, and, and not actually looking to score or distribute or anything. like You, you could talk about different mid-range jumpers from different players or Walker Kessler shooting the three ball. It's like, sure, those guys could, could every now and then hit those shots. But I, and in my opinion, it was not the most efficient decision uh, that these individual players were making. And uh, I, I, wish, I wish there was a little bit more structure to Auburn's offense. And that's one of the pitches by, uh, from uh, Coach Pearl, right? You come to Auburn, you can play freely. You can do whatever you want in his offensive system. There's a little bit of structure. There's a little bit of flex in it. Um, but overall, players get freedom to do uh, some of the things they want. They get freedom to take those early shots. They get freedom to take those long threes. Um, but I think that if the team had a little bit more structure, a little bit more discipline on the offensive end, um, they would be very, very, very successful. Not like they weren't this season, but um, some of the decisions that were made uh, by not just the guards, but everybody, Shot-wise, some of them were confusing to me. But that's okay. Not everything's going to be perfect. 
Turnovers late in the season also were a problem. Again, to go back to what I was saying way earlier, is that if you apply high ball pressure to Auburn, if you hedge screens and if you focus on the guards and making them uncomfortable, uh, the half-court offense shuts down, and it led to a lot of turnovers. It led to Auburn panicking in moments and just not knowing what to do with the ball, getting rid of it and turning the ball over. We got to see that. It was on full display against Miami in the final game of the season. Just not knowing how to take care of the basketball. And then also, one more thing. This is the last bad thing. Not knowing how to manage end-of-game situations was another issue for the Tigers. I mean, we saw it time and time and time again. We got to see it against, uh, we got to see it, gosh, who am I thinking of? We got to see it against Florida. We got to see it against Arkansas. And there's one more, there was one more game where Auburn Auburn didn't know what they were doing at the at the very, very end. No, was that it? That might have been it. But there, there were moments where Auburn would have opportunities to capitalize at the end of games or potentially win it on a, on a buzzer-beating shot. And they just, uh, some really, I don't want to say dumbfounding because I, I, I don't, I don't want to rag on the team. I, I was impressed with some of the things that they did, but just some weird decisions at the end of games where you see Wendell Green at Arkansas fogging up a half-court shot, essentially, at the end of regulation instead of making a better decision. You see at Florida, uh, Auburn try to get the ball in, try and run a play for Kessler, and they're just simply not able to get it in, and they're, they freak out, and they don't know what to do with the ball. I, I think that it's good that Wendell Green is coming back for another season because if Auburn finds themselves in situations where they need a guy to step up and be clutch, I think Green has gotten a little bit more experience. He's gotten to learn. Uh, he's got to find out the bad side of what happens whenever you make bad decisions at the end of games. And I think he's going to be able to adjust. And I think that if Auburn finds himself down, they need a bucket. I think Wendell Green will be able to handle himself a little bit better this season. But that's the good. That's the bad. That's the overall thoughts of the team and their season. 28-6 and six on the year, 15-3 and three in the SEC. Uh, cannot take away from the positives, there are some negatives. Let's acknowledge the fact that some of the things that happened at the end of the season stunk, but the positives were overwhelming. I think it was a good year.